this third part of our texturing tutorial, we're going to make our own texture. We're going to paint it using Blender internal painting mode and we're going to do it on our character. First of all, let's make a new image. Name, size, no alpha really. I use gray as default because it's easier to see at the beginning. Then switch to texture paint mode and from now on it may look similar to what you've been using before. It's basically just brushes like we used before. Shortcuts are the same. F for the size and Shift F for the opacity or strength. Click around and that way you are already painting on your own texture from within Blender. By default it uses projection paint that it works perfect most of the time, but if you are a bit far away, then it may get a bit slow. Because it has to calculate projection all over your mesh, of course. You can also paint from within the UV image editor. Just press the little brush button there in the header and you're set to go. If you want a bigger brush, although the slider only goes to 200, you can just click on it and insert your own value, like 1000 for example, and that will make a 1000, and that will make a brush of 1000. Let's paint with another color, just for fun. And let's paint the entire character this color. Just let's switch again to UV image editor, a brush of 1000 and then just a few clicks and you're done. If you want to see the real colors of your texture without this shading thing going on, you can just simply switch the shading mode to texture or with Alt Z or Alt Z and then in the end panel and the sub panel display on the right just switch from GLSL to multi-texture. This way it's easier to pick colors. For picking colors, it's just a matter of right-clicking anywhere and you'll get that color. You can even do it on like widgets or like in the axis, for example, and then you can get colors from everywhere because this is uh, all drawn in OpenGL. So let's paint a little bit. All the settings for all the brushes are used here so even the curves for example if I want uh, harder edges just a matter of pulling up that curve you know the right side of that widget represents the outer part of your brush you can be really precise but if you want to be super precise you can make use of the loops over there and just paint over them. How? By using the mask mode. Just enable it from the header or press M to enable. Now, while you're in this mode, you can hit Tab to go Edit Mode and select all the faces you want. And Blender will limit the painting on that. So you can just select whatever you want to paint and then paint without worrying about the rest. Since you're painting over the faces as reference and you don't have many faces right now, you will have some jaggy edges over there, but for the time being, while you're painting, you can raise the subsurf value so you get a more smooth surface. Then paint in mask mode. And you get a much, much nicer silhouette. You can zoom in to fix some parts.
So that's another reason why it is good to have uh, loops. Until now, we've been using the mix brush, but you can always switch to another blend methods like uh, multiply or add or lighten or darken, for example. From there, you can also change the alpha. And by default, Blender paints with projection painting on, which the name says it, it uses projection. So, so it will paint from the point view. And when you rotate, you get these kind of things. But you can disable it and the painting will be really not precise. But that's what we are looking for, right? Uh, like for overall colors, it's pretty, pretty good. The downside it has is uh, especially on seams. It doesn't respect seams and it looks horrible. But on the other hand, it gives you these nice smooth transitions. So if you want to fix these seams, what would you do? Easy, just enable project painting back and then pick a color or just paint with a plain color over there. Easy. And then you can start getting rid of these seams. Or even better, instead of using the draw brush, just change to smear. And this works even better. There is of spacing there, you can just get it lower. Nice. So that way you get rid of all the seams. It's like they were never seams. So that's great about having the chance to paint on the 3D view because you can fix this kind of stuff. You can also, instead of using this texture of making your own, you can just bring a texture you painted in Photoshop or GIMP or whatever and then fix the seams over here. That's also possible. Because of course, being in 3D makes it much, much easier. I'm going to paint the inner side of the mouth. Some color. And let's see how we can paint this. Okay, that could work. Until we can't get any further. So Let's see some tools to get and paint on those little hidden places. First, Alt-B. We already used this in other tutorials. It's a way to clip the view, so it kind of cuts the view at half, and you can get inside parts, and you can get inside your 3D mesh and stuff. Very nice. Another way is just to move the geometry, easy. If you move it by holding Control, it will move it every few Blender units, so it's easy to go back to the exact same place you had before moving. 
then you can always move them back. Oops, I have some vertices there I need to fix. So I'll be moving the vertices or the third one, it's even better. It's about hiding what you don't need. Just select with L in face select mode, so you select over the so you select with the seams as limit. Then invert selection with Ctrl I and then press H to hide. Nice, and now you have access, you can paint the tongue, for example, or whatever part of your body without any worries. Like if the mesh was never there. Save the image, important. Format, RGB is all right. We don't have alpha right now. Great. Let's assign that. Let's add some color to the eye socket. Again, let's repeat the same tools. Select a few loops, then Control plus to add some more loops to the selection, surrounding loops, and then go to texture paint mode, press M for a mask, and just paint. Quite fast. Now for the eyelids, let's do it the other way around. Let's select the eyelids, and then in the UV image editor window, just let's paint there because we have because we have a shadow of the actual mesh. Let's change the curve to constant so we don't have any shading issues. And then save and reload. And if the if, and if for some reason the texture doesn't update, just save and reload. Shortcuts for saving and reloading in the UV image editor is Alt S to save, Alt R to reload. So let's use this image as a texture. Let's go to the material, add a new texture, change texture type to image. Then as image, and let's change the preview so we see both. In the image panel, let's select it from the list or just go and browse for it. Awesome. What's next? The mapping, that's important. By default, Blender uses the generated coordinates. What does it mean? Generated coordinates are like the coordinates of our mesh, the bounding box of it. So we don't want that, let's switch it to UV. Great, now if we render, we should already see something. Ah, of course, uh, I put the texture on the material itself, not on the particles. So let's name it. Then go to the little black triangle there on the right, click Copy Texture Settings, then go to the other materials, Base, Textures, and New Channel, Black, Paste. Then the same with the other ones. Click, click. The white strands, I'm going to leave it like that, and then Fluffy, and Paste. Perfect, now let's see how it renders. Um, good enough, but it's too specular, I think. Looks like it is not even there. So I let's remove specular from the face and maybe lower it in some others, like in the chest, lower it a little bit. 
and by default the specular have a unique color that is set in the specular panel in the material settings but if but you can make it use the texture colors if you enable it in the influence panel under specular color then instead of using one plain color it's going to use the colors from the texture itself which is nice see how it renders let's quickly make something for the eyes just plain colors nothing fancy Less intense ramp. Okay, it's a bit dark. Let's uh, let's raise that light up. See how it looks. Ah, uh, much better. Let's see the chest. Nice, that's nicer. Uh, if you zoom in, you will see there are some issues with the white strands. They have these artifacts. Hmm. Yeah, that. I think that is. I think that is either the specular or it's just too too white, too strong. So let's lower the specular a little bit. and render. So that's it for texturing. We went from making our own UV, unwrapping it, tweaking it, making our texture and applying it as a texture to our particles. Awesome. Hope you liked it.